Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. And as promised, we have our Hollywood historian, Manny Pacheco, with us. Art, are you glad to see Manny again? Don't you miss I'm, him? I'm so glad to see Manny all the time. <laughs> but I'm particularly glad to see him because, well, I have a special question that maybe Manny is one of the best prepared people uh, to answer this. Uh, okay. During this last year, we've had uh, a, a weird way of releasing movies uh, uh, because of COVID and, and what have you, uh, and the changing nature of the industry anyway. Um, but the SAG Awards are, are right around the corner. Has right. that changed uh, the way that you look at it um, and the way people look at it in general? Because I know you're a voting member. Well, yes. I mean, I, I, I've received most of the films that are up for awards this year uh, through stream. I have not gone to the movies this year. I've watched every movie from the uh, confines of my home. And uh, fortunately, I've got a nice system enough that I can I can uh, uh, reasonably assess the quality of the films. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been it's been different. I mean, they've had to be very creative in the way they dispense films for all of the awards, I'm sure, for the Golden Globes and for the Oscars that will be coming up later in April. So, yeah, I, I believe they've actually come up with a great way. And of course, they do lots of panel discussions after the movies featuring the actors, the writers, the directors. And so Zoom panels have been, of course, the uh, interviews du jour. And we've been getting plenty of those. So I'd say, yeah, we've been doing very well. Has the movie industry changed, do you think, during the pandemic years? What's 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 different about uh, the films? Well, I expected a major difference in the way films were going to be made and presented uh, on screen. And quite frankly, this year's awards uh, are covering many of the films that were made right before all production shut down. So... Uh, we got a great slew of terrific films that were probably uh, in production in late, mid to late 2019, maybe early 2020, with just a smattering of films that were probably made during COVID. The most notable is a film called Malcolm and Marie, featuring just two actors, a shoestring a ca a, 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 a crew, and it's filmed entirely in one house. So it was made very safely. And uh, but you can tell that this is a, co a post COVID environment as opposed to some of the other films that I've seen this year. I think the real change is going to happen next year when, you know, now films are going to be uh, presented that were maybe produced in mid to late 2020. That's going to really be the game changer next year. But this year, a great slew of films and, and a, a surprising amount of, 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 of quality films. I was shocked at that. Well, I think that uh, one of the forgetting about the, the COVID, is that one of the most dramatic changes that's been happening was pre-COVID, which was that the studio system is basically gone. And they're distributors more than uh, manufacturers, although some of them have back lots. But the, the major studio, the funders, the idea factories are Prime, Netflix, Hulu. I mean, who knew? That's right. That's right. <laughs> right? And, Disney, and Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah, but but I'm sure you're you're waiting with bated breath. Who I might think are some of the notables that might win this I, year. I actually put some bait in there, so thank you. <laughs> Go for it. We want to know. Well, let's begin with the uh, with the uh, the best actor category, because and that's very similar to the best actor, of course, for the Oscars. This is going to really tell you exactly where we stand, and uh, far and above the the most. The best performance, the most popular performance, maybe a sentimental performance, is the late Chadwick Boseman in uh, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Now, it would be easy to say it's a sentimental choice because he passed away, but quite frankly, I believe it's the best performance by any actor in any category this year. He is that good. Uh, presented by Netflix. There are others that were real good. Riz Ahmad from The Sound of Metal. Uh, make that Riz Ahmed uh, from The Sound of Metal, and particularly Anthony Hopkins in The Father. Uh, uh, this is one of these uh, films about disability, uh, having uh, uh, Alzheimer's, but they really take it from the point of view of actually having the disease, the way the film is made, not others reacting to the disease itself, but actually 
seeing what people see when they actually have the the, the, the affirmity. And so it's it's quite a task to take by anybody. But remember that, you know, I mean, we're talking about an 80 year old man and Anthony Hopkins and he pulls it off. So that's that's but I, I would have to say that right now it's Chadwick Boseman, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom Best Actor. Now, is there a category in SAG because it's all acting awards? Is there a category in the SAG Awards that kind of translates to the best picture in the Academy Awards? Because SAG Awards are yes. always looked at as a yes. precursor to the Academy Awards. The Academy Awards looks as best picture by, you know, by way of acting, direction, cinematography, uh, set design, sound, music. I mean, the, the whole package. In The SAG Awards will look at a cast and that cast uh, alone. They won't look at any other thing, but they want to see how solid the, the team in the in the acting division performed together. And this year we have a solid group of great films that fall under that category. Um, the, the Five Bloods, Spike Lee's film, it's a buddy film about uh, uh, a number of Vietnam vets who go back searching for the remains of their fallen soldier. Ironically, Chadwick Boseman is that is that character who, who, who loses their life in the film. But Delroy Lindo is particularly good in that film as well. He, he didn't get nominated, but probably should have. Uh, One Night in Miami is a great uh, a cast ensemble group of a, of a supposed or fictitious meeting between, of all people, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, the, the, the football player, and Sam Cooke, the singer. And it's a great staged production. Uh, One Night in Miami is not to miss. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, I, I'd mentioned, with Viola Davis. And just great, great cast in that. But my choice for that particular category would be The Trial of the Chicago 7. You've got a lawyer. you got a judge. you got a prosecuting attorney. And, of course, you can't go wrong with colorful uh, um, historical figures like Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, and uh, and the like. I mean, uh, really, really uh, colorful uh, folks on trial and played by terrific actors, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and Eddie Redmayne, Mark Rylance. It's just a great cast. And that's my choice this year for the best cast ensemble. Uh, do you think you that want, you want to go female on this, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you think that this year, um, uh, and I, I, I know there's a big difference between uh, the SAG Awards, which is basically acting, and the Golden Globes, which is acting plus, as is the Oscar, the m many more categories. But uh, do you believe that the SAG Awards are going to have um, uh, special makeup uh, uh, voting for uh, things that involve people of color or uh, female uh, actors uh, or uh, female uh, directors? and some of the behind the scenes. We, we how how political is it going to be this year? Well, we don't deal with directors, number well, one. I understand, so you can just but rule still, they, they influence how a film turns out. Right, right. But, we, no, we look at the performance. I know, I, look, I can't speak for the entire, uh, 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 how folks vote, and I wouldn't even hope to try to. I just, I, I can speak for myself. But I can tell you that the, this year's crop is really heavy on, great diverse roles, which is always a good thing. We always want some great diversity. And the female roles are particularly strong this year. And uh, many of these great films happen to also be um, with, with female directors. A Promising Young Woman is one of the, one of the darlings this year. And uh, it was, uh, and the actor Carrie Mulligan is up for an award, but, but it was directed by a female director, as was Minari. A great uh, a story about a Korean family who uh, emigrate to Kentucky. It kind of has some funny elements to it, but it's a soft movie at its core. Nomadland was also uh, directed by a female uh, a, a director who's made a, a number of films. So, yes, um, this year has a diverse crop of great productions, and the diversity is rich, and I'm happy to see that. Um, but, you know... All in all, you just want to see great performances. And um, if we can include the great diverse performances as well, that, that only enriches the, the pot, I think. But speaking of the female uh, actors, boy, I'll tell you, just a strong group of Viola Davis and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Vanessa Kirby. 
in pieces of a woman. She actually has childbirth in the first half hour of the movie. And I'm not divulging anything because that's the first half hour. And it is riveting uh, cinema. Let me just tell you, my choice this year, Francis McDormand, Nomadland. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's hard to go against what I consider maybe the greatest actor of our generation, female female actor of our generation, maybe the greatest actor of our generation. Mm. I don't think she ever does a bad performance, but she has a knack, and it's a very special knack, of appearing in films that seem to be designed for her, as if they were written with her in mind. And again, yeah. she delivers. Viola Davis probably will win this award, and that's fine because she never gives a bad performance at all. She's just tremendous. But my vote, definitely for Frances McDormand. Now, uh, if I may, I'd like to also talk about the supporting characters because that's the other two that I get to get to vote on. Yeah, please. Good. Let's yeah. hear it. Yeah, the, the male uh, supporting actors, uh, boy, I'll tell you, there are three actors this year that are just so, so good that I, it was hard for me to make a decision. I, if any of the three win, I will be thrilled. And uh, the first of which is Daniel Kaluuya, uh, who was, uh, remember he was in that movie a couple of years ago, Get, Get Out. Well, he's in this year's Judas and the Black Messiah. He plays a Black Panther revolutionary and he's just ferociously great. Lots of energy, terrific performance. Sasha Baron Cohen is Abby Hoffman in the uh, trial of the Chicago Seven. Funny, irreverent and smart just a great combination and my choice this year though goes to chat uh to uh to leslie odom jr who's by the way uh from from the the play hamilton he actually appears as sam cook in one night in miami he sings he acts he is truly he captures the spirit of the late sam cook he's just terrific and uh, it was hard for me to make a choice because I went round and round with those three, but I finally came up with uh, Leslie Odom Jr. He's my choice this year. And as far as uh, best female actor in a supporting role, well, I don't get to vote for my favorite. Amanda Seyfried in Mank was absolutely spectacular, but she didn't get it voted in. So here's really? my prediction. You're going to hear it first on Celebrating Act Two. You're going to hear it first. Are you ready? Yeah. She doesn't get nominated. She does not get a nod for the SAG Awards. She's going to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. That's my really? prediction. Yes. So of the choices I have, okay, so I've got some choices, comes down to two. Olivia Coleman, Coleman against Glenn Close. Does that sound familiar? Mm. Yeah. Remember yeah. the wife <laughs> versus the favorite about two years ago, three years ago? Yep. We're up against each other. Again, Olivia Coleman for the father, Glenn Close for Hillbilly Elegy. My choice Glenn Close, Hillbilly Elegy. Not a big fan of the film. She is what the film is all about, as far as I'm concerned. Every time she's on screen, she shines. Many times, personally, I am willing to vote for an actor in a film I didn't like if the performance was worth it. That's, well, that's the way it I, should be. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. That's exactly right. Uh, one great example of that, uh, maybe, maybe 10, 12 years ago, is when I voted for Christoph Waltz in a movie I absolutely despised, Inglorious Bastards. Didn't yeah. like the movie. Uh, however, he was riveting, and he got my vote. So there you go. And he got the award. Yes, yes. He did. He won. Well, so go, That's so, because you're an influential member. Well, the secret, if you're listening out there, Hollywood, okay, you need to suck up to Manny. No! no. <laughs> because Manny, Manny knows. Do He's the man. I shouldn't have turned that way because, you know, I, I'm having an implant in my tooth and I just saw it. That was that was not a good look for me. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but here's I, I'm sure you're interested in my top three films. this Yes, year. I, I'm sure you'd like to hear. Absolutely. It. Like, oh, yeah, I, this Mandy, is, can I ask you a question? Okay. Yes. If if I don't get a chance to watch anything but three films this year, which ones should they be? Well, my choices would be. One Night in Miami at number three. It, it, it is a, I mean, if you're a fan of Muhammad Ali or you love Jim Brown's football or you just love the music of Sam Cooke or you were uh, into the politics of the 1960s and, and, and listen to the prose of, of Malcolm X, this is the movie for you because it's well written. It's written as a stage play and Regina King is the director and she is just masterful in, in her directoral debut I, I it's just such a great film and that's my my third choice number two the trial of the chicago seven i have such reverence for the entire cast 
Uh, there are some uh, some real surprises. Michael Keaton shows up for mm. a small role. Um, I'm telling you, uh, Mark Rylance is the uh, defending attorney, and he's terrific. I just uh, Tom Hayden is played by Eddie Redmayne, an Academy Award winning actor, and they all deliver. Mm. Fabulous movie. And my number one film this year, if it had been nominated uh, again in, as for cast, I might have considered it. But I think that the best film of the year is Mank. I loved uh, I love uh, Gary Oldman, who's nominated for Best Actor, and Amanda Seyfried shines as Marion Davies, the muse of William Randolph Hearst. Okay. Well, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, you know what? It's really sad that, uh, you know, everybody can wait until Monday morning because if they just wrote this down, they'll know who the winners are. Well, if I'm right, I might be wrong because I, you know, I said Francis McDormand, but the envelope might just open for Viola Davis. So, I mean, I, I did say that. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. you know, it's coming out there. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, well, what Manny, I this has been a this has been a great preview of the acting awards, but also a preview, a little bit of a preview of the Academy Awards. I think so. And, and one more thing, if you want to see the complete list, I did write a blog on ForgottenHollywood.com about this list. I always let go of my, my announcements. I'm not shy. I, I'm not quiet about who I vote for. And I'm happy to share it. I know some people are more secretive about whatever guild they belong to, and, and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind sharing in, in my case. And it's all fun as far as I'm concerned, because that's what really cinema is about. It's, it's about entertainment. Yeah, I guess one of the things that's... Uh always been true is that uh, for every uh, film or actor or uh, uh, director in all of the different award ceremonies that win, there's generally at least seven or eight others that are worthy. There really is, rarely is a total runaway, you know, just given different types of people. That's right. That's right. That's right. I will give you one, one film to watch out for, though. It's, it's The Sleeper, Promising Young Woman with Carey Mulligan, edgy, smart, mm -hmm young you get the feeling it's a young film but carrie mulligan of course a, a veteran actress it's just a real edgy fun film just watch out for that it might sneak away with a, an award or two promising young woman it's worth watching well at this point Good i enough. have to say that um uh, i really need as since i'm running the control panel here i need to to quickly close this down because i got two or three films backed up okay <laughs> and they don't even include the ones you just mentioned oh. so i gotta run for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.